So for the body, we're going to be making several panels, and the, each of the panels has a different size. So I'm going to show you one of the panels. The two side panels are going to be the same size. Then you're going to have a top panel and a bottom panel. And the bottom panel is going to be the soft white colored yarn. And if you're using the other style of yarn, then you would use that style of yarn. But for this one on video tutorial, we're using the soft white colored yarn. So we're using that for the bottom. So I'm going to be showing you one of the side panels. So for the side panel, we're going to start with a chain with your brown colored yarn for the main color. And the first thing we're going to do is make a slip knot. So you're going to take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down. Cinch the loop around your crochet hook and then we're going to make a chain. So I'm going to only show you four of the chains on video tutorial, but you're going to make a chain of 51. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. So go ahead and finish your starting chain and your starting chain when you're finished should be a chain of 51. So after you finish your starting chain, you should have a chain of 51. We're going to start with our first row. So for our first row, you're going to go back into the second chain from the hook. So just count back one, two, go into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, you have two loops on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to go into the next stitch over, and then bring up a loop, make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch across. So one single crochet in every stitch across, and then come back. So now, this is how your work should look. This is the first row. To move up to the second row, you're going to chain one, turn your work, and you'll notice that there's a little upslope beneath your chain one. You're not going to go into that stitch. You're going to go into the next stitch over. So take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over and bring up a loop and make a single crochet. So that counts as your second stitch. So that chain one counts as your first stitch and then this next single crochet is your second stitch. And you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch across and when you finish this second row you should have a stitch count of 50 still. So you're maintaining the stitch count of 50. So now I finished the second row and I'm ready to move up to the next row. So you're going to keep repeating this until you have a total of 20 rows. So we just finished the second row, so we're going to move up to the third row. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and make a single crochet into the next stitch and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch back across. So you're going to repeat this, chain one, turn your work, one single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet into every stitch across until you've completed a total of 20 rows and then come back. Now when you finish the 20 rows of one single crochet in every stitch, then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through the loop to finish off. And then you just cut your yarn. I already finished all of my body panels. Now I'm going to show you the chain count for making each of the body panels. 
They're all made the same way except your starting chain is going to be different and also the number of rows are, are going to be different for the front and back panel. So for the bottom of the body, you're going to start with a chain of 51 and then you have 20 rows. For the two side panels, you're also going to start with a chain of 51 and 20 rows. So these are the two side panels for the body. They're made the exact same way as the bottom panel. Then you're going to need a top panel. So the top panel, you start with a chain of 32 and then you make 20 rows. So the top panel is a little bit shorter because it's going to allow for the neck opening. So for the top body panel, you're going to start with a chain of 32 and it also has 20 rows. Then you're going to need a front and a back panel. So the front and the back panel are made the exact same way. For both of them, you're going to start with a chain of 21. And then I only made 18 rows for the front and the back panel. So now, after you make all of your panels, we're going to put the body together. But first I'm going to give you the measurements. In case you're using a different style of yarn, I'm going to give you the approximate measurements for each of my body panels. So for the two side panels and the bottom panel, they're all the same measurement and they're approximately 11 inches in width and then in height it's approximately 4 inches. So 4 inches and 11 inches. And that's for the bottom panel and the two side panels. So they're all about the same size. Then for the top panel it's going to measure 7 inches so approximately 7 inches by 4 inches. So 7 inches by 4 inches for the top panel. And then the back and the front panel measures approximately 4 inches by 4 inches. So both of them are the same size, 4 inches by 4 inches for the front and the back panel. So now we're going to sew two panels together. You're going to take the bottom panel and place it with the right side facing up. Then you're going to take one of the side panels and then you're going to take the right side and place it on top of the right side. So you have the right side. This is the wrong side facing up, but the right side and the right side of the bottom are together. So you place those together. Then you can take, if you have loose yarn ends, you can go ahead and tie a knot with the two loose yarn ends. And then take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn. And then you're going to just sew the two panels together. So one thing I just want to point out is because I have a different style of yarn, you may notice that the brown color is slightly smaller than the, um, the soft white color, and that's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't um, affect it that much. They're both approximately the same size, but I want to point that out in case that happens with you too. Sometimes that happens when you use a different style of yarn. So then you just take and sew the two panels together. And then you can just tie a knot with the loose yarn ends. So you just take your tapestry needle and then you're just going to go in and out sewing the two panels together. And then I go about a stitch over so I don't make huge stitches as I sew because I don't want gaps in the body. I want the body to be secure and none of the stuffing coming through. So these are about the size of my stitches. And then you just sew the two panels together all the way across. Make sure that the ends come together. So you don't want the ends to be crooked. So if you need to tie a knot on this side, you can. 
but mine is lining up pretty good so I'm just making sure it stays lined up as I sew the two panel pieces together. Now when I reach the end I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot and I usually go through twice then you can take and cut the yarn leaving a little bit of a loose yarn end and this is what it looks like this is the wrong side and you'll notice that on the wrong side you create a little bit of a sewing ridge you want to keep that sewing ridge on the wrong side and then on the right side you have a nice edge created for the body and that's what you want so you always keep the ridge on the wrong side so now we're going to sew on the other side panel so make sure you have the right side facing up and then you take your next side panel and whatever side that you want to be the right side that's the side that will go down. So you're going to have the right sides together. So here's the right side and here's the right side of the bottom panel. Then you can take and tie a knot with the loose yarn ends if you have them. And then you can take and join the yarn and I usually just use the brown the same color brown that you used for the main color then I just tie a knot and then you just take and sew the two panels together the same way that you did on the opposite side and again you want to make sure that when you open it up you'll have the right side sewn portion and this ridge that you're creating will be on the wrong side. So now this is what it looks like on the right side and this is what it looks like on the wrong side and you can see that my ridges are on the wrong side this is the bottom of the body and then this is the side and the other side. Now we're going to sew the top portion on the body so go ahead and place your crochet work so that the right side is facing up. Then take the top panel and remember you want the right side on the right side of the side panel. So you place the two right sides together and you want it to line up with the back end of the body. And what you're going to create is the neck opening. So, once you've placed the top portion on the side panel, the right side of the side panel, go ahead and tie a knot in the corner. And then you just take your tapestry needle with the brown colored yarn, and then you're going to sew the two panel pieces together. So you do it the same way, you just go back and forth, sewing the top panel onto the side, one of the side panels. So now after you sew the top panel onto the side panel, this is what it looks like. You can see how all of the sewn edges look nice and smooth and all of the wrong ridged sides are on the wrong side. So now you want to make sure that the right side is facing up. So you have no ridges, no sewing ridges on the right side. Take the top panel and fold it up across to the other side panel and the two right sides again are together. 
you line up the two edges and then you're going to take your tapestry needle with the brown colored yarn and you're going to join it make sure that the edges line up if you want you can just start from this back edge and that way you know that the edge is even you don't want it to be crooked because then your neck opening will be crooked so just join your yarn and then you just sew across sewing the top edge to the opposite side so now you have the top panel on top of the side panels for the body and this is what your work should look like so far and I have the wrong side facing me so all of the sewn ridges are on the wrong side and now you're ready to sew the back panel on so keep it so that the wrong side is facing you then take one of the panels so remember the front panel and the back panel are both made the same way so just grab one of them and you want the right side facing away from you and then you're just going to line it up with the back of the body and then you can tie the corners to kind of hold them in place so whatever side has a loose yarn end you can take and sew it I mean tie a knot to join the corners then you can take and join in one of the corners so make sure it lines up and I already tied this corner so I'm going to take and join in the opposite corner where I didn't tie a knot yet and then you can take and line up the edges and then just sew the panels together you're going to sew all the way around just go in and out sewing the pan back panel onto the back of the body so this is what it looks like after I sewed the back panel in place then you can take and turn your work so that the front part is facing you and I still have the wrong side facing me and then I'm going to take the front panel and again you're going to have the right side facing I'm going to have this my right side so the right side will be facing towards the right side and the wrong side is facing me and then you can take and tie a knot with any corner loose yarn ends to hold the corner in place then you just take your tapestry needle with the brown colored yarn and then you're going to start in one of the top corners so since I tied this corner I'm not going to start here since it's held in place and I'm going to start in the corner without a loose yarn end and I'm just going to take and tie a knot and get ready to sew the front panel in place so you can see that you're going to have a neck opening and I still have the wrong side facing me and I'm going to sew along the sides and the bottom of the front panel so the top portion will be left open for the neck so now I have the front panel sewn on and the back panel and everything is sewn in place for the body so now you can take and turn it inside out so just take and turn the body inside out and then you can see how you have a nice back portion and the front portion of the body 
All of your seams look nice. You should not have any sewn ridges on the right side if you did it correctly. And here's the bottom. So once you've finished turning the body inside out, we're going to start working with the neck. So now you want to take and join your brown colored yarn in the back corner of the body. I chained one and then I'm just going to tie a knot. And then I'm going to chain one again. Then go ahead and take a yarn marker and place it right where you left off. And then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Now for the first round you may vary in stitch count from me and that's because your different style of yarn possibly also where you ended up with sewing the top portion as well as the evenly spaced single crochet across the back. So you may come up with a different value. But what we're going to do with each of the subsequent rows is get down to a stitch count of 66. If you already have a stitch count of 66, then you would just make one single crochet in every stitch around. Now for my first round, I ended up with 75 stitches. So I want to gradually decrease in these next couple rounds to a stitch count of 66. So for this next round, I'm going to be demonstrating a decrease round, which means I'm going to decrease the number of stitches in the round. So I'll be showing you how to make a decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So all you have to do, if you have a close amount to the 66 and say you only need a couple decrease stitches, just evenly space them around the opening of the neck. So now for the first decrease round, I'm going to show you how I make this decrease round for mine. So you're going to move the yarn marker up to where you left off. And then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next 15 stitches. So one single crochet into 15 stitches. So now I have one single crochet into 15 stitches and now I'm going to make a decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together and what that will do is decrease the stitch count by one because I'm single crocheting them together. So you take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So, so far I've decreased this round that I'm crocheting by one stitch. Then I'm going to make one single crochet into the next 15 stitches again. And then I'm going to single crochet two stitches together. And I want to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So one single crochet into 15 stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and then repeat. Then if you have any remaining stitches you can just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches. So after this round I made four decreased stitches that were evenly spaced all the way around the neck. So I evenly spaced four single crochet two stitches together or decreased stitches around this round. So that means I decreased the stitch count by four. 
So now I have a total of 71 stitches in the round. So I'm going to make for my next round, I need five single crochet, two stitches together to decrease the stitch count by five and end up with a stitch count of 66 for this third round around the neck. So what I did was I just took my stitch markers. I need five decreased stitches, so I just evenly spaced them all the way around the neck opening. So depending on how many decreased stitches that you need to reach a stitch count of 66, just evenly space them. If you've already reached a stitch count of 66, then you would just make a single crochet in every stitch around for these next this for this next round. If you don't have stitch markers, just stick a loose yarn in into each of the stitches that you want to make your decrease stitch into. So I reached my first stitch marker and I'm going to make my single crochet two stitches together or decrease stitch and then resume one single crochet until I reach my next stitch marker or your scrap of yarn through the stitch. If you love my stitch markers, I got them from Pastiche Accessories on Etsy. So now you should have a total of 66 stitches in the round for the neck and you want to make one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds. One, two, three. So three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around and each time you finish the round you should still maintain a total of 66 stitches in each of the three rounds. For the next round, go ahead and move your yarn marker up and then make one single crochet into 14 stitches and then you're going to make your decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. So you just go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, go into the next stitch and bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch or single crochet two stitches together. Then just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker, one single crochet into 14 stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. When you get back to the yarn marker you will have two stitches remaining. Just place one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches and that should give you a stitch count of 62 for the round. Then just move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for one round. So one round of one single crochet in every stitch around, maintaining your stitch count of 62. The next round is going to be a decrease round and for this decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into 13 stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Then repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you should have two stitches remaining. Again, just make one single crochet into each of the two remaining stitches and then that will give you a stitch count of 58 for this round. Then just move your yarn marker up and then you're just going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around for one round and you're maintaining your stitch count of 58. Then the next decrease round is going to be one single crochet into 12 stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and then you just repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then when you reach the yarn marker you're going to have the two remaining stitches you just make one single crochet into each of those remaining stitches and then that will give you a stitch count of 54 then just move your yarn marker up and again you're just going to make one round of one single crochet in every stitch around
Then for the next decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into 11 stitches and then single crochet two stitches together and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 50 stitches in the round. Then you're just going to move your yarn marker up and make one single crochet in every stitch around for only one round and then come back. Then for our last decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into 10 stitches and then single crochet two stitches together. Repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have a total of 46 stitches in the round and this is what mine looks like so far. For the next three rounds you're only going to make one single crochet in every stitch around. So one single crochet in every stitch around for three rounds and each round you're maintaining the stitch count of 46. Now after you finish your three rounds of one single crochet in every stitch then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then you're going to finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to help sew the head onto the body. And then this is what my opening looks like. I already have a little bit of craft stuffing in there. But now you can go ahead and add more craft stuffing to get ready to sew the head on the body. So now you want to make sure that you have enough craft stuffing in the body. Make sure that the back end is stuffed with enough craft stuffing and the body is shaped the way that you want it. And then once you have the amount of craft stuffing that you want into the body, you can put your tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing and then you're going to position the head and you want the back of the head in line with the back of the body or the neck and you want the front of the head so that the nostrils are facing towards the front of the body so you don't want the nostrils facing this way or down or this way you want to make sure the head is positioned where you want it and that the nostrils are facing forward and then once you're happy with how the head is in position, you need to hold it in place. And then this first round that we're going to make is just to make sure that the head is held into position. So you're going to skip some stitches on the first round, and that's okay because you're going to make several rounds sewing the head in place. Then you just take your tapestry needle and you're going to go into the body, that top stitch of the neck, go into the head and then you're going to come out of the head with your tapestry needle and then once you come out of the head you're going to go about a stitch over on the head and go down into the body and you can see how I'm grabbing the tops round of the neck with my tapestry needle and bringing the stitch through. And then each time that you stitch you want to check the position of the head and make sure that your nostrils are still facing forward. And then once you come out on the body you're going to go about a stitch over on the body and go up into the head and then come out of the head. And that's how you're going to sew the first round and then each subsequent rounds wherever you need to place a stitch. So I came out of the head, I'm going to go back into the head about a stitch over and then come down and out of the top round on the body. And that's how you're going to position the head and sew the head in place as you sew. And like I said, you're going to check the nostrils 
Make sure that the nostrils are facing forward. And then I'm going to go back into the neck and back up into the head and then out under the neck and come out with my needle. And then I'm positioning the head again. Make sure that I have the nostrils facing straight. And then you can go about a stitch over on the head and then come back out and down the neck. And that's how I sewed the head in place. And every time I just double check the nostrils and make sure that they're facing forward as I sew around the head. So this is what it looks like after I finish sewing the head in place. And then this is the chocolate colored donkey that I make. And right now I'm going to show you how to make the mane, the donkey mane. I just wanted to show you that the nostrils and the head are straight on the donkey and then the ears, how they look and how the eyes look. For the mane, I would recommend using this pom-pom maker. It measures approximately 5 inches by 5 inches. It's very large and it works great. So you can make pom-poms out of it for the mane. It's really easy. And for mine, I made approximately five, so you don't have to make a lot, and it's quick and easy for the main, and it looks great. Now, if you don't want to buy one of these, you can make your own pom-pom. Just take a piece of cardboard, and my cardboard measures five and a half inches by five inches, and you can just use a piece of cardboard to make your pom-pom for the main. You're also going to need a small pair of embroidery scissors, and that's mainly for if you purchased your pom-pom maker because it's easier to cut to release the pom-poms. Both methods will work. I actually prefer the pom-pom method because it sticks up more than with my homemade one. But they both would work. So now you're going to make some pom-poms and I'm going to show you how many I made. And I'm going to show you both methods. I'm going to show you how to use the pom-pom maker, which measures about 5 inches by 5 inches in size. This is my large one. You can see it's, it's almost as big as my hand. And I'm also going to show you how to make your own homemade one. So if you don't want to buy a large pom-pom maker, you can make your own too. I actually prefer the larger pom-pom because I feel like it stands up more and then with my homemade one it'll work but it doesn't stand up as much as my other pom-pom but I'm going to show you how to make both so if you're going to make your own you're going to need a five and a half inches by five inch cardboard piece of cardboard for my chocolate colored horse I used my black colored yarn for the mane and then for my other lighter brown colored horse on video tutorial, I'm going to use a coffee colored yarn. You can use any dark brown if you want to. And if you want to use black, you can use black yarn too. But I ended up using my coffee colored yarn, which is some of my darker brown that I had left over from Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo. So first, I'm going to show you how I used my pom-pom maker to make a pom-pom. So the first thing that you're going to do is just lift up the two arches and then also the two arches on the bottom. Then you just take whatever color yarn you want for the main and I usually hold off a side of the yarn here along the side of the pom-pom maker and then I take and wrap it around the arch. So you're going to wrap it all the way around the arch, covering up the arch. Then once you've covered the arch, you're going to end on the opposite side. So you just take and hold it on the opposite side and then just take and cut the yarn on the opposite side. Then you can take and just fold the arch down and it'll click in place. And then you're just going to repeat the process on the opposite arch 
and then just cover the other opposite arch the same way. So you can see how I ended on the opposite side. I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn end. Then you just take and close the opposite side arch. This one has a little um, place where it clips into place. So this is what it looks like. Then you're going to need your little embroidery scissors to cut. And I just cut. Don't cut on the side with the handle where you lift up because then it lifts up and messes up the pom-pom. So I just cut on the opposite side where it doesn't lift up. And you can see how the embroidery scissors just fit nicely down the center. Then you take and turn and cut the opposite side. These pom-poms are so quick and easy to make. I love it. Then you just take a piece of the yarn, just cut off a fairly nice size piece of yarn to tie down the center. So you just go right down the center of the arch. And then you're also going to use this yarn not only to tie the center of the pom-pom, but also to sew the pom-pom in place on the donkey. So you can see how I cinched down the knot right down the center. And then once you cinch the knot down, then you can take and you can release some of the loose yarn ends on the side or you can just leave them and trim them. I'm just going to pull them out. Then you just take and open up the pom-pom. So you take and open the arches. It's real simple, quick and easy. And then you can just take and release the pom-pom. And then you have a cute little pom-pom for the mane. And what's nice about the donkey mane is it's hard to get the um, mane where the pieces of yarn stick up. So using this pom-pom method helps to get the tuft or sticking up look for the mane and it looks great. So now I'm going to show you how to make your own handmade pom-pom if you don't want to buy the larger pom-pom maker. To make your own pom-pom just grab your cardboard that you made and again, mine is five and a half inches by five inches. Then I just take my yarn and then I hold the loose yarn end off to the side. So just leave a little bit of a loose yarn end off to the side. And then you're going to take and just wrap the yarn around the cardboard for the five and a half inches. And then you want it fairly wide because you're going to make it wide across. You just continue wrapping it around until you get a lot of yarn on the cardboard. And I kind of make mine fairly wide, not five inches wide, but enough to where I have about an inch on each side. And then you just keep wrapping until it's covered. Then, once you have it covered the amount that you want in the center, go ahead and cut the yarn, but make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for wrapping around the center and for sewing. So then, once you've cut your yarn, then you can take and remove the cardboard. So luckily the cardboard can bend a little bit if you need to, and just kind of remove the cardboard and have your fingers inside to catch the loops. And then make sure you don't lose your loops. And then take and wrap the yarn around the center. And cinch down the center. And then you could take your loose yarn end and take and tie a knot. Now it's going to move because you have the one loop, so don't worry if you if the first knot, don't pull it too tight where you lose 
the loops on the inside. Then you can take and wrap another time to pull it tighter, the center tighter. And then take and tie another knot with that loose yarn end. So you just tie the knot right in the center of all the loops. Then once you tie a good knot, then you can take and find the center of the loops on each end and then take your scissors and just cut all of the loops. And then you're going to repeat on the other side. So just find the center. And then just go right down the center and cut the loops on the opposite side. Then you have your mane or pom pom for the mane. And you can see that with the larger one and cut any loops that you miss. The larger handmade pom pom maker is not as fluffy as the little device that I use by Clover to make a pom pom, but it'll work. So it won't stick up as much as the Clover pom pom maker, but it still works for the main. And then you just take and cut any loops that you miss, and then it's ready to sew on your donkey. And then you just use your long end that you left for sewing to sew the donkey mane in place. So now you're going to take your pom-pom that you created and put your tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing. And then you're just going to take and position the pom-pom on top of the donkey's head. So you position it where you want. And then I'm going to place mine about right there. And then just position the, the pom-pom so that you have the tufts sticking up. Then you can take the tapestry needle and then you're going to go down into the donkey's head right where you want to position the pom-pom and then just sew the pom-pom in place. So I'm going to take both long ends that I have for sewing. And then I'm just going to take and sew into the top of the donkey's head. Just sewing the pom-pom in place. And then I'm going to tie a knot. So the initial sewing is just to get the pom-pom to stay where you want it on the head. Make sure you move the tufts of hair out of the way. So you just go back and forth making sure that you've sewn the pom-pom where you want it. And you can go up into the pom-pom too. And then double check with the front and make sure it's positioned where you want it. And then you just kind of sew down into the donkey's head. and then up into the pom-pom. Just securing the tuft of hair where you want it. And then once you've secured it and it's not moving, make sure it's where you want it and it's not moving. Then you can take and tie a knot on the back and then I usually will just trim 
the hair and leave the, the loose yarn ends that I left for sewing as part of the hair. So then I just take and trim and then it becomes part of the hair. So now you have the cute tuft of hair right in between the ears and then you can kind of fluff it and trim it if you want to. Then you take your next pom-pom and this is one of my handmade ones from the cardboard and then you just line it up right behind the previous one and sew it in place just like you did for the one on top of the head. Make sure you don't have any gaps between the pom-poms, so get it as close as you can to the first one that you sewed in place. Once you know where you want to sew it, you can just take your tapestry needle and go and grab some of the donkey's head with the tapestry needle. And then pull the pom-pom in place. And then go into the pom-pom and then back down into the donkey's head. This is how my second one looks after I sewed it in place. And you're gonna sew pom-poms all the way down to the back. So this is my second one. So you're gonna need about probably five pom-poms. So mine actually only needed four and I had two handmade pom-poms for this mane and two of the clover pom-pom. And you can see that they both, me both methods work well and it looks really good. And it's so quick and easy. I, I finished this really fast. And it looks great and it pokes up on the top of the head, which is what you want, a little tuft of hair right between the ears. Now you can set your horse aside while we make the legs.